Amen. I want to. I'm going to share something today. I know you've heard this before, um, but how many know it, the word always bears repeating? And uh, one of the words Pastor Reggie used, he said uh, about a place being in the right place. And so I'm going to share a message today uh, called a place called there. And uh, in First Kings chapter 17, I want to begin reading a story. First Kings chapter 17. And it says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, it's important to know who you spend time in the presence of. You know that last song, This is How I Fight My Battles. I pray you really get a hold of that because, the, you know, your, your greatest battle is not fought in church, it's fought at home. And I don't mean with your husband or with your wife. I mean against life. You know, there's been times that some of the greatest battles that Shadi and I have fought through, we have stood and worshiped. And that you position yourself in worship where you get your eyes off the situations and circumstances and your focus is on solution, not problem or, or the pain. Amen. And hope comes alive in your heart where you lift your voice, you lift your heart, you lift your hands, and you worship God. Not because the situation is good. Situation may stink, but God is good. I don't worship because things are going well. I, I worship because God makes all things well. Yes. Amen. And so Elijah declares, as, as the Lord God of Israel, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. That's pretty bold. When you're speaking to a king and you say, look, uh, it's not going to rain until I say so. You better know you've heard from heaven. And in the days in which we live, there's things that we need to declare. We need to lear learn to declare a thing, to, to speak forth what God says concerning our lives and our situations and say it with confidence and boldness, knowing that we've heard from heaven. Not just in here, but you can hear from heaven when you read it here. He said, so there will be no dew, no rain, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, you know, there'll be things that you need to declare out for the benefit of others, and then there's things that God is just talking to you about. Amen. Word spoken, received, believed, acted upon, brings the miraculous. And there are things that God is wanting to do that's beyond reasoning, natural understanding, or explanation. I believe that we're in a day where God is wanting to do these things, not just hearing stories about it, but God is wanting to do some unusual, unexpected, extraordinary things on your behalf. Come on, somebody say, I'll take that. Amen. Then the word of the Lord came to him. See, one came through him, then one came to him. Saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. See, one of the reasons you need to get a word from the Lord is because when you get direction, direction will always put you in a place of provision. Amen. When you get the right direction, provision will always be there. He says, now, there I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Now, ravens are birds that, that they're kind of scavengers. They'll, they'll take from anybody, take anything. They'll even rip off other birds. And God says, I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. Everybody say there. there. See, there is a place where God wants you. There, not there. His there, not your there. How many of you sometimes you picked a there that God didn't pick? God said there, and you said, but I like there better. No, God said there. Yeah, but I like it over here. God does, he said there. And Cherith actually is a rocky place. It's not the most comfortable. God said, there. Everybody say, there. there. How many you know God's smarter than you are? Amen. So God, I would say God's there is better than you're there. Amen. Amen. See, it's a place he has chosen for you. Now, if you allow me a little uh, room here, so I, I, I do want to preach literally, but I also believe there's a man called there and a woman called there. And God said, him. Yeah, but Lord, oh, I like him. Or you're looking at this other woman and God says, no, 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 her, there. Yeah, but Lord, I like this there better. No, there, her. Yeah, but have you seen this one? <laughs> I 
Yeah, but like Samson, she can leave you bald and blind. <laughs> Remember what God told Samuel, you know, you look at man, you look like man looks on the outside, but I, the Lord, I see in the heart. She might look good on the inside, on the outside, but let me tell you, on the inside, you're in trouble, bro. There's a man called there, a woman called there. There's probably a job called there. I believe there's a church called there. Where God said, listen, I want you, I, there's a house I want you in. There's a place where I want you because there's words that you need in your life. There's words you need as a man, as a husband. There's words you need as a woman and as a wife. There are things that you need for your family. There's, there's a place for your children that can get built, truths can get built in them that will secure them for their future. Yeah, but I, I, I want to go to this other, no, no, I don't want you there. I want you there. Because there's words, there's a shepherd that you need in your life that will put words in your heart that will build a godly character that will help you to sustain whatever's going to come against you in the future. So you need to be there, not there. That doesn't mean you ne name your next child there. Amen. Ephesians 2.10, if I could have that in the Amplified. Wow. Talk about timing, huh? And we didn't even practice that. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. Say, good stuff. How many know God don't make junk? For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, Jesus, born anew, which we, that we may do those good works, which, I love this verse, which God predestined, and then it goes ahead and explains predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. So we got planned beforehand and prepared ahead of time. How many know it's already been put in order? Planned beforehand, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should Walk in them. So if the path has been prepared ahead of time, it's not so much you're trying to kill yourself to create something as much as you need to steal yourself and discover something. Most people are killing themselves trying to create a life when they, what they need to do is discover what has been planned beforehand and prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. Go on. Living the stressed out, burned out, harsh. No, living the good life which he prearranged. So we got planned, prepared, and prearranged. I think that's a place called there. And I believe it's a good place. Verse 5. We're back in 1 Kings. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Smart man. One of the keys of, of our lives right, is in this verse right here. We went and did according to the word of the Lord. We went and did according to the word of the Lord. We went and did according to the word of the Lord. See, there's a place where you need to go or there's an action that you need to be obedient to. You need to forgive that person. Yeah, but I, I don't want to. You need to do according to the word. Well, I, I didn't get it in here yet. No, but it's already in here. See, and the more you allow this to renew this, the less you'll struggle when you hear here. See, a mind that's renewed by the written word of God will not get caught in a fight with the reasonings and the intellect and the arguments when you do get a word in your heart. See, you can follow easily the leading that you get out of your spirit when your mind is renewed with this. It says, and he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Now tell the person next to you, I know this is for one of us. <laughs> so he went and did according to the word of the Lord and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Now these birds are going to show up twice a day with bread and meat. Where they're getting it from, I don't know. I don't think Elijah cared either. I, I don't have to care about trying to understand where it's coming from. I just need to be in the right place to receive what he said is coming. 
See, I don't have to understand how it works, but I just need to be in the right place to receive what is going to work. Now, if Elijah's over here, guess what's piling up here? Bread and meat twice a day. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And if he's not here, guess what continues to pile up? Bread and meat. Because the birds are going to obey God whether the prophet does or not. If God can get birds to obey him, how much should you and I obey him? And you can be over here wondering, where's the food? It's in a place called there. Where's my provision? It's there, but you're here. Yeah, but you need to be there. And there's areas of our life where the Spirit of God has been speaking to by your own heart, through your conscience, or by this written word, and you know you need to be in a place doing a certain thing, and you're wondering why you're frustrated, why there's stress, why there's weight, because when God said there, in that action, in that obedience, in that forgiveness, in that joy, in that this is how I fight my battles, come on, I want you to worship. What he told Jehoshaphat, I want you to go out and I want you to take the singers and the worshipers first. In fact, the Bible says, position yourselves, stand still. See, when you position yourself, you put yourself in the place called there. And our obedience to that word and what rises up here puts us in the right place and the provision is seen. That peace is seen. That wisdom comes through. The understanding comes through. The entrance of his word brings light and it gives understanding to the simple. His words were found and I ate them. They became a joy for me. His word brings life unto all your flesh. It's medicine to you. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and the evening. Ask yourself if you've been dealing with some frustrations lately, have you acted upon the last thing God asked you to do or gave you direction to do? Because one of the things that I found out from the Lord is he doesn't, doesn't argue, he just repeats himself. If you found God, I mean, when he gave Peter a vision on top of Simon the Tanner's house, he didn't argue. He just told him, showed him the same thing three times. And then finally told him, hey, go with them, doubt nothing. And if, if something is, is repetitious in your life, if, you, if you, you, you see this certain words coming to you over and over again, get a clue. There's something that he has for you. There's, there's something that he's wanting to break in your life. There's a new joy. There's a wisdom. There's a peace. There's a direction. There's a significance. There's a fulfillment. That's why you've got to be in the right place. You need to be in the right house because there's, there's something of dignity and significance and value and destiny that God is wanting to build into your life, and you needed to be in the right place, hearing the right words for that to get established. Oh, come on. If you're going to clap, you need to clap better than that. Come on. This man is not normal. And now I will explain that. He's very unique. And you need to thank God that you can come into this house consistently Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And have a house and a ministry and a life that is dedicated completely to the word and the spirit and an impartation of whatever is needed and necessary to bring the fullness of this word and his spirit to make it real in your life. That whatever can possibly done from this platform to make your life better, bigger and stronger for you to fulfill the will of God in your generation. You need to thank God for that because... So he goes to the brook and he's in the right place. And guess what happens when you're in the right place? The provision shows up. Where did they get it from? I don't know. Maybe they went into the king's kitchen. And they're just sitting there waiting for the hot bread to come out. And whatever they're making for breakfast. I don't think it was Jimmy Dean sausage because, you know, <laughs> this is Israel and they don't eat pork. So I don't know. But whatever it is, it's bread and meat in the morning and bread and eat meat in the evening. Twice a day. It's pretty good. 
Everybody else is going through famine. He's sitting there drinking from the brook. Provision is seen. And it happened that the brook dried up. Well, why did the brook dry up? Because it's a natural resource. Natural resources can dry up. Heaven never dries up. See, and this is what we need to understand. God can use resources to bless you, but the natural resource is not your source. God is your source. He will use natural resources, but it's a natural resource, but it's not the source. He is the source. One may dry up, the other never dries up. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Well, it's a natural happening. But you see, God has a way of bringing a miraculous intervention into what would be the natural course of nature. And that's why we have faith. That's why we trust this supernatural God. That's why we, we I mean, this book from the beginning to end, this is not natural. And, and let's not put God in a box where we expect him to be so normal. He's not. Jesus walks on water. He spits in dirt, puts it on a blind man's eye. He, everything about him is, is absolutely amazing. Don't shrink your expectation of what God can do in your life. Don't allow past hurts and pains and disappointments to cut you off from what God has for your future. Don't allow disappointment to become a part of your life. Because disappointment will, will disconnect you. Uh, you know, if you look at disses, the disappointment, the discouragement, the disability, the, all the disses, they, 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 they take you away what, from what God has in your future. That's why you come in and you get a, li- a, a word that's full of life to take you forward and, and continue to build this expectation that, that what you have to see in the future is far greater possibly than anything that you've ever seen in the past that we put no limitations upon God. We, why do we have all of these supernatural stories where God does all these incredible things from, from the Old Testament into the New where Jesus takes water and he turns it into wine? If he did it there, he can do it here. Amen. God does... The brook dried up. I've got so much going on inside of my head, not to mention a little jet lag. So just, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. And see, I've commanded a widow to take care of you and to feed you there. Again, he gets another word. We have this written word that continues to build character and teaches us how to live. But, we, but one of the greatest things that I've learned in my life is you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. You've got to learn to hear from the Spirit of God on the inside of you, giving wisdom and direction. For when you begin to make decisions, you need to allow what you hear to come alive in your heart. But, you know, no matter what you hear in your heart, you still have to judge it because it will never uh, contradict God's written word. Amen. Now, I want to... Jump to Genesis just for a second. Genesis 26. And, and don't worry, this is not an offering message. So usually this is spoken during an offering. Genesis chapter 26. Verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. One of the things we see is that famines are cyclical. There's famine in the time of Abraham. There's a famine in the time of Isaac. If you remember, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Why? Because there's seven years of plenty, and then there's going to be seven years of what? So, you know, how, how many famines are there in the Bible? I don't know exactly. haven't studied it, but it's consistent. There's good times and then there's bad times. There's times of plenty, there's times of abundance, and there's times when things are really, really tight. And one of the things about listening to the Spirit of God is God will teach you that in the times of abundance as you honor Him, when you get into times of lack, you will not lack. When you honor God with your first fruits, you don't come to the end of your last fruits. Amen. So there was a famine in the time of Isaac. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you. In other words, don't go there. 
stay here. Because there where God wanted him was where God said, don't go to Egypt. Egypt also is a type of the world. Sometimes when things get tight, we have a tendency to want to turn to the principles or the values of this is how the world works. So I'm going to follow this way. No, no, you need to follow not according to going to Egypt or the ways of Egypt. You need to stay where God wants you doing what God wants you to do. Yeah, but it's looking kind of tight here. It's looking kind of barren here. There's a famine here and it looks better over there. No, you stay here. You cannot get to the place where you're led by your eyes. You've got to be led by your spirit. You can't be led by the reasoning of your mind. You've got to listen to the principles of God's word and what your spirit tells you. God said, listen, I want you to stay here. Don't go to Egypt. Stay here. I watch families destroyed because people made decisions. Well, I got a great job there. Yeah, but there's no church there. Yeah, but... It's one of the biggest problems. People have big butts <laughs> that continue to get in the way of what God said. Yeah, but. No. No, don't, don't go there. Yeah, but Lord, look at what they're offering me. What about your family? What about your wife? What about your kids? What about your, your spiritual growth? What about the purpose that I have for you? Listen to your spirit. Don't just look at what, it's, what it looks like financially. Listen to your heart. Because any decision that you make following the will of God, the plan of God, and the purpose of God, which is prearranged, made ready for you to live, you will not lack. It will be a good life, and you will not sacrifice your marriage. You won't lose, lose your wife. You don't, won't lose your husband. You won't lose your kids. doesn't mean you won't have some challenges, but you will be in a place where God's provision will be seen in your life. That's for somebody in this room right now. You're getting ready to make some decisions, and I'm telling you right now, it's not right. Please don't raise your hand. Just keep smiling, look ahead, and nobody will know. It's you. Listen to the Spirit of God. He's telling you, don't do that. Too many heartbreaks of people have gone here and gone there, and God said, I don't want you there, and I don't want you there. I want you here. This is the there for you. It's a place where you need to be. He said, don't go to Egypt. Don't go down there. Dwell on the land where I'll tell you. And I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and to your descendants I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your, your father. Listen, you follow me. I'll keep my word to you. That's what he's saying. Listen, I will perform my word. God's not a liar. In fact, it's impossible for him to lie. He said, listen, follow me. My word will be true in your life. I just want to jump ahead to verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. What land? In the land of famine. What did he do in, in a time of famine? He sowed. What is one of the last things we usually do in a time of dryness and barrenness? Sow. And I'm not talking about an offering. I'm talking about sowing the right words. When, 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 when you might be in a famine concerning relationships, your wife, your husband, your sons, your daughter, whatever's going on, and what you sow, your words out of your mouth, the actions of your life, the touch of your hand, the lifting of your hand and your voice and your heart and beginning to worship, there's things that you need to sow that cannot be determined by what surrounds you, but has to be determined by the direction that God gives you. You want to bring change to your situation? Sow into it. Grow your future. Grow the future that God wants you. Yeah, but I'm looking for a lush place. No, you'll see the miraculous of God that in the place he told you to be, that's where it will grow. But you've got to sow. You sow your obedience. You sow your faithfulness. You sow kindness. You sow generosity. You sow tenderness and mercy and compassion. You sow forgiveness. 
Whatever you need to release and sow into your situation. Your situation is temporary. This word is eternal. Now Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became very prosperous. I like it. He began, he continued, and then he got to the very. You'll never get to the continued and to the very if you don't begin. You need to stay in the place where God to Don't leave that relationship. You stay. Two of the greatest diseases in believers today is the look away and the walk away. God said, I want you to look at that situation. I want you to allow it to touch your heart because what you, you allow to touch your heart, you'll reach out and touch. If you don't let it touch you, you won't touch it. What you don't touch, you'll never bring change to it. So don't look away. Make yourself available, then what you carry becomes accessible. So don't look away and then don't walk away. Stand, fight, believe, pray, but do not walk away. Don't walk out of the relationship. Fight for it. Don't, don't, don't walk away from a hard place because in that hard place, God is establishing and building character, consistency, perseverance, faithfulness. He's making men and women out of us that can walk through any storm. He didn't create the problem. He doesn't create the bad. He doesn't call, cause harsh things to come to us. But he shows up in the harshest situations and he's saying, don't run, stand, fight. Be the one like David that says, I can do this. When everybody else is running in fear, be the one that can stand up and say, I can kill that giant. Stand when nobody else stands. Don't run from the harshness, the dryness, so into it. Do what's needed and necessary to bring change to your situation. Don't run. That's why we add to our faith. Thank God for our faith. But 2 Peter says, be diligent. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control. You know what self-control is? The ability to control yourself. <laughs> to self-control perseverance. In other words, continue. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Continue. 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 If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. In other words, God is building something on the inside of us. We're not, we're not wimps, we're not whiners, we're warriors, which means we stand, we fight, we continue. We don't give up, we don't quit, because there's something that's prepared, pre -plan, uh, planned ahead of time, and so I'm going to walk in it. doesn't mean that when I walk in it, I don't have challenges, but I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue what's been prepared for me. doesn't mean there's not going to be a few dry times along the way, but I will continue. He's establishing a godly, righteous, holy character that sustains me and becomes beautiful when I'm in my community. I become a light in the midst of darkness because I didn't give up, I didn't quit, I didn't go to Egypt, I stayed in the right place where it was dry, and I did what he told me to do, and now what's happening? I, to the point that when Isaac began to, began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became very prospered, that he became a testimony in the land, and people became jealous of him. When is the last time people looked at your life and they were jealous at the favor of God that is abounding on your life? Come on, I think it's time we made the world jealous. Instead of the church being jealous of what the world has, it's time for the world to look at us and go, my God, my God, how do I get what they got? Where does this joy, where does this peace, where does this wisdom, where does this hope, where does this healing, where does this spiritual power come from that they stand in the midst of any adversity and they do not blink, they do not flinch, and they care. They're the most compassionate, unselfish people I've ever been around in my entire life. My, where do you get that? And our pockets are not empty. We're not broke in the midst of all of that either. When is the last time the world became jealous of the church instead of the church becoming jealous of the world? And where did God give birth to it? In the middle of a famine because he said, stay there. Everybody say there. There's a place called there and that's where you need to be. So you can begin, continue, and then you get to the very. And we just need to make the world jealous. Amen. Yeah. 
So many asked, well, never mind, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just getting ready to come out and the Holy Ghost goes, don't do it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Maybe he'll tell me later. Yeah, but I want to know. Well, then you ask him. <laughs> Sometimes you're getting ready to say something, and he'll just go, mm. okay. He'll stop you from saying things you were going to say. Then he'll help bring some things out of your mouth. And when you hear it, you're going, wow, that was really good. And he goes, yeah, that was me. That wasn't you. Listen, I've preached some messages sometimes so far beyond myself, I had to go back and take mess notes on my own preaching. It was so good because half of it I'd never said before in my life. It's like after Jesus had uh, preached from the boat, and the disciples had fished all night, and he says, listen, I want you to go out into the deep, let down your net, nets. Lord, we've been out there all night. We didn't catch nothing. See, what happens, our most recent failures or disappointments can begin to determine or limit our future expectation. I, I don't want to live there. So I want you to launch out into the deep and let down your nets. So they went out, what they considered the wrong time of the day in the wrong place. But you see, out in the middle of the lake was a place called there. Guess where the fish were? There. I mean, no, God knows where the fish are. Where are they? So Peter goes out and he goes, well, nevertheless, at your word, we'll let down the net. Jesus didn't say net. He said nets. <laughs> so they let down one. They limited what he could have done. And with one net, it began to rip. They had to call other boats. And so they filled up other ships that they began to sink. What would have happened if they would have really obeyed? What would happen in your life when we don't allow the past to determine present and future obedience of what? Listen, whatever happened in the past is the past. We can't change that. But your future is yet to be written as far as your obedience. Well, I need to wrap this up now that I'm done with my introduction. No, no. Don't worry, I'm just kidding. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise and go to Zarephath. See, the word of the Lord comes again, which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. Not visit, dwell there. I want you to go, I want you to stay there. See, I've commanded a widow there. Everybody say there. there. There's a lot of there there. I want you to go there. And I've commanded a widow to bride for you there. If he goes to any other city, guess what? He is out of luck. Where did he say? Zarephath. Go there. And I've commanded a widow to feed you there. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there. Where? Where God said. Gathering sticks. And he called her and said, please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a little morsel of bread in your hand. Now listen, this prophet, he's doing pretty good. He's been getting bread and meat twice a day. I don't think he shows up looking too skinny. I think the brother's looking pretty good. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Now, as soon as those words come out of her mouth, the prophet could think, wow, this is my provision. You send me to a place. I speak to kings. I pray. I stop rain. Later on, I'm going to call down fire from heaven. Doesn't know that yet, but it's coming. <laughs> so I know you want to take care of me. I'm your man, and you send me to a woman who's going to eat one meal and die. <laughs> not a rich person, not a merchant, not a businessman. A widow with a son who's going to eat one meal and die, and this is going to be my source. No, that's a resource God wants to use, but he's always the source. Amen. 
She's going to eat our last meal and die. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Social media today would have blasted that. It would have gone viral. Fat prophet steals last meal from dying widow. In the middle of a famine, prophet comes into town, takes last loaf of bread from dying widow. Do not go to his church. How arrogant is this man? No, make some for me first, and then make some for yourself. Verse 14, for thus says the Lord, your, the Lord God of Israel. Here it comes. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. See, here comes the, see, everything becomes possible when the word of the Lord is released, received, and believed. See, it's not Elijah talking now. He's now just the avenue by which God is bringing a word to her. And he declares it. And I love this verse. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the the word of the Lord, which is spoken by Elijah. Now, two verses I want you to see. In verse 5, it says, the prophet went and did according to the word of the Lord. Here, we have a widow who went and did according to the word of the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're the prophet, if it doesn't, doesn't matter if you're a widow getting ready to eat your last meal. Your future depends on you doing according to the word of the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're in the platform. It doesn't matter if you're on the pew. You still have to go and do according to the word of the Lord. It's the same for every single one of us. What happened? God's provision was seen. I believe God's provision wants to be seen in every one of your lives. What is the key that removes the frustration? Just got to go and do according to the word of the Lord. See, yeah, but, but, but I'm not hearing. Can you, can you read? Because the more you get this to renew this, the clearer you'll be able to hear here. And the beautiful thing about the prophet coming and dwelling there, not only, because you see, God was not so concerned about the prophet. He was really concerned about the woman. See, her obedience secured not only her future, but as you read the rest of the story, after a period of time, her son dies. She comes to a lot. She goes, she comes to the prophet. She goes, are you here to remind me of my sin? I don't know what her sin was. I don't know her past. But he goes in and he prays over the boy and the boy is resurrected. Her obedience to the word of the Lord not only secured her present. It saw her through the rest of the famine. It fed her daily through the rest of the famine. But it also made sure that in her future, she has no husband. She's a widow. It also... He, God also makes sure that not only is her provision seen physically for food, but she does not grow old alone without having someone there to love her, to care for her, and to watch over her. God is securing the future, not only of her physically, but to make sure that her son is alive. So he brings the prophet in the key, was going and doing according to the word of the Lord. In a harsh time, the word of the Lord is not only going to bring an answer then, but it's going to secure things in your future that you know not of. But you've put yourself in the right place where God can come in because it's prepared, it's prearranged, it's planned ahead of time. And when you're in a place called there, it just begins to unfold as you continue following the word. Amen. 